Hey everyone, welcome back to Better Biomed. Today we are going to talk about heating elements and how to figure out if your heating element is good or bad. So, uh, your heating element is basically a giant resistor and giant resistors that have values between usually 10 and 30 ohms. So, when you're testing resistor at all times, you have to disconnect one leg from the circuit and now you can test it. Now, the cool thing about heating elements is that they're almost always running at line voltage. Some heating elements in medical equipment will run off of pulse DC, but usually, for most devices, they run at line voltage, and they do that for efficiency, because the higher the voltage and AC is very efficient in heating elements in general, compared to DC. So, when a heating element is turned on, it runs at full current, which means at 10 ohms, you're getting 12 amps, which is 1440 watts. That is the max, pretty much the max that you can get on 120 volts. Now this would be like a heating element for, let's say a water heater or something like that. Um, the, the cool thing about um, devices, electronic devices, is that they always have a wattage and amperage on the label, the data sheet, on the back of the device. So what you should do, since you know that the heating element probably runs at line voltage, is you read the amperage and that helps you figure out the ohms of your heating element. Because your heating element almost always runs at full current. So, uh, Ohm's law comes into play. And in order to figure some things out, we just rearrange Ohm's law. V equals I times R. So voltage equals the voltage drop equals uh, current times resistance. So as I said, when you are testing out, you are going to have your multimeter on ohms. Yep. Let's set this guy up proper. So when your meter is on ohms with one hand, you are gonna you're gonna disconnect one lead, and when one lead's disconnected, you will run it. Of course, the device isn't plugged in. Um, you are gonna check the ohms across both the leads. So one of them's disconnected. You can check the ohms. Now you're just going across the HENA element alone, and because you read the data plate on the back of your medical device. Here, let me just show you. I got one right here. Unfortunately, this one is not going to have a data plate. So on the back, there's a data plate which talks about the current requirements for that device. You should be able to use the current that it says is the maximum theoretical for that device and figure out what the ohms are for that heating element. Then measure across the heating element and see what you get. Now, heating regulation uh, as in how it's regulated inside the device is usually analog. It's usually analog because what they will use, they'll use thermostats or resetting circuit breakers. So what it is, is a, it's a bimetallic strip and when it heats up to a very particular temperature, the bimetallic will open up and then when it cools off, it closes. So it's running full current, it gets to a certain temperature, it opens up, and then it cools off, it closes, runs full current, opens up, and that is how it regulates its temperature. Now, almost all devices, medical devices, have a backup thermostat of some sort. It's gonna be in there. It's either gonna be a thermal fuse or it's going to be another resetting thermostat. Sometimes it's a push button on the back of the device that you push and it will reset it. But uh, check the ohms of your heating element Almost all heating elements are gonna be between 10 and 30 ohms. Your ohms are gonna dictate the wattage of your device. So if you read the data sheet or the data plate on the back of your device, you see how many amps the device is supposed to pull. That should tell you round about how many ohms your heating element runs because your heating element almost always runs at full current. Okay? All right, guys, if you have any questions, go ahead and leave them down below, but that, in a nutshell, is 
heating element theory. Let me know what you think.